before announcing the next talk, Hossein asked me to inform that in the screen outside, it doesn't appear the last talk of Gavrielov. So just to inform that after the talk of Mardisik, we have another talk. So uh, let's go to the second talk of Professor Mardisik about Darbo relative exactness and pseudo abelian integrals. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, I thank the brave ones who remained here for the last talk in this series. Uh, so uh, let me just resume somehow what is the situation. So we are studying uh, Darbu uh, systems. This means that we have the first integral f equal the product i goes from 0 to d, f i to lambda i, m is the product of f i, omega is m d f over f, and we had uh, three generic conditions, g1, g2, and g3. Uh, and uh, so this is the first integral, and we study the foliation given by d omega equal to zero. In that foliation, we take a cycle. Omega, omega, omega. The, uh, yeah, sure. Omega equals zero, and in this uh, foliation, we take a real cycle delta. And uh, we uh, now make a small deformation. So omega plus epsilon eta is equal to zero. And somehow the first order term in the displacement function is given by uh, the integral of this form eta divided by m. And somehow this will be the subject of our study. Or slightly more general, we will study when eta, uh, the integral eta over m along the cycle delta of t is identically equal to zero. And so the, the, the main result is the theorem. So under conditions g1 to g3, this is equal to zero if and only if. Uh, I will, it's not important, I will put here this slightly more general uh, denominator which corresponds to the situation which one needs, say, for, for instance, establishing the Francois uh, algorithm. So this is equal to zero if the form eta over mk is given by p over m k plus one omega plus d of r over mk plus the sum of alpha i dfi over fi. Here, so these p and r are polynomials. And these alpha i are constants. So essentially, the story uh, what is the way to construct it? So these guys are easy to, uh, uh, to construct. So one essentially uses one separatory uh, L0. So this is F minus one, uh, F0, uh, minus one of zero, uh, which has to be chosen in such a way that there is a node at infinity. And uh, somehow what is important is to show the existence of this function, which I will denote by G. Uh, once one has this function, then one will have, uh, uh, one will obtain that if one subtract this to the other hand side, one will have something which is proportional to omega. And then uh, we have some global coefficient of proportionality and uh, by estimates one sees uh, that it is of this form. But so uh, what uh, Colin 
uh, studied. It, what, what Colin presented was the line case. That is, all fi are of degree one. And now I want to study the general case. So we have these functions fi are of certain degrees. So each fi is equal to di, which can be equal to 1 or, or any, uh, or something else. So uh, OK. The general strategy is somehow the same as in, the, in what was presented by Colin. So the idea is that we first, so we have a CP2. In CP2, we have somehow this uh, curve L0, uh, and uh, which can have some genus. And we first construct in a neighborhood of this curve, the, the, we construct uh, somehow this function g. So first thing we constructed, but here is, it's, essential, it's exactly the same thing. There is nothing that changes. We, we construct it in the neighborhood of the point at infinity. And then we want to extend it somehow to a neighborhood of uh, the, 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 the sepatrix, L0. Uh, and this, in order to be uh, somehow to, to make it work, in order to, to obtain a univalued function, what we will need is that somehow this condition uh, propagates to other cycles. We, we, we must have many cycles where this is equal to zero, uh, which will give somehow the univaluedness of this. So we, essentially, we will work with the. Uh, okay, so what we have to study uh, uh, monodromy of the foliation. So uh, we first, as exactly as in the, in, the, in the line case, we start with a special case. And this is essentially the same configuration which was studied by, uh, by Colin to start with. But somehow these lines come in packs. So instead of, so w what do we have? We have an expression like this. And now each fi is of degree is di. And somehow we will approximate, or we will take kind of a model of this fi as a product of di lines. So we write fi as a product fij, uh, 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 j goes to one, from 1 to di. And so then we have uh, some function, a Darboux function, which is a product i goes from 0 to d, product fij uh, to the power, uh, so j goes from 1 to di to the power uh, lambda i. So note that this is not a generic. Uh, Darbu function, Darbu integral. Because we have re repeated exponents. So we don't have uh, the, the quotient of all the exponents is different, is irrational. I mean, the, the, many of these quotients will be equal to one. But then we make a small deformation. Uh, this small deformation 
is just like this. So we have P of this uh, Fi uh, lambda. So somehow each one of these polynomial uh, we will approximate by a small deformation of a product of the same number of, uh, of straight lines. And moreover, we make a configuration uh, that maybe it is simplest to make a picture. So essentially, this will be exactly the same picture which was done by calling, but I will put some colors. So what do the colors mean? Uh, same color corresponds to the same exponent. So we have one pack of lines followed by another pack of lines. There can be a third pack of lines and so on. So, the, of course, the number of lines is equal to, to, the, to the corresponding degree di. And uh, moreover, the idea is that we want to do it as it is uh, in the picture. This means that the pack are kind of, uh, uh, they don't uh, interfere. We have one pack, and then we have another pack, and so on. So this is somehow this. This corresponds to, to this situation. And now one makes a small deformation of this. So one, one adds a small parameter epsilon. In such a way, so what will happen with these terms? So uh, they will be deformed. So uh, essentially, there are different, maybe I will not draw all of them, but essentially we have rectangles and, uh, well, maybe I, I, I will draw them. So we have, uh, nine types of somehow cells here. So uh, we can have a rectangle where all the sides are different, of different color. Then we can have two and two. Uh, so two and two, yes. We can have two and one and one. Sorry? Uh, okay, and so we can have all of them the same. And we can have three plus one. And we can have uh, the last one with rectangles somehow like this. And the triangles, they are somehow three types of triangles. We have uh, everybody which is the same. and. Uh, so you will tell me that we, this is, of course, corresponds to uh, one plus one plus one plus one plus one. This is uh, two plus one. This is uh, two plus one plus one. This is uh, four, and so on. Uh, but just uh, I want to, to to remark so that here. Uh, no, it is the second, thank you. Exactly, we have two plus two, and here we have uh, uh, also two plus two, but they are different because the configuration is different. And uh, so then when one makes this small deformation, uh, what happens is here we have essentially the same thing, 
But what will happen here, uh, so here also we will have essentially the same thing, but somehow when we have uh, such situation, it will be actually, it will become kind of a, uh, a cycle like this. Here we will have something, one separatrix, which, no, sorry. Here we'll have one separatrix, which should be like this. Here we will have one, which is somehow like this. And uh, here we have one, which is like this. And, uh, and so on, the, the same, just may, maybe put one here. Uh, and so now, the second thing that one does is <laughs> this, uh, ah, uh, maybe one, one thing that I should also say what, uh, no, okay. Uh, so now we do monodromy. Somehow, as uh, you understood, a key, uh, somehow ingredient here, are these Pohammer cycles. So as they are really very important here, I, I will say a few more words. I mean, Colin spoke about them, but I would like to say a few more words. So essentially what I will say here, this is from our joint paper with Marcin. So you have, uh, I mean, this is this kind of pictures. So, so what is essentially important is a semi-local picture. So you have L0, you have uh, two, so somehow, a preceding uh, separatrix, uh, succeeding separatrix, and you have a cycle, a part of a cycle, like this. And now you do... Yes, and there are exponents. The exponents here is a lambda one, which corresponds to, 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 to this uh, uh, separatrix. There is a lambda two, which corresponds to this one, and there is a lambda zero, which corresponds to this one. And so what you do, you do a monodromy, a variation, a weighted variation. So variation with weight lambda of a cycle gamma of t is gamma of t exponential 2 pi i lambda minus gamma of t. And so uh, essentially this cycle, we will look at this cycle, how it, wh what does it look like on the projection to this L0. Uh, so what we uh, look at is the cycle variation lambda one, variation lambda two uh, of the cycle gamma. So if we do a variation lambda one, so this lambda one, uh, it is in the index here. So this is the lambda one which appears here. It is exactly the exponent of the, this term which appears here. So this is the reason somehow these two exponents, they cancel. It is as if there was no exponent here and there was no exponent here. And for this reason, actually, this, uh, this, this part will make a full turn around the origin. If we cut at, this, uh, at some height, this makes exactly a full turn around the origin. So here we will have a full turn. This is the projection. So we have precisely a full turn uh, if this was like this, this is continuation, so this goes like this. And here, we always turn in the positive direction. Uh, this is not a full turn. This is uh, two pi. This turn is somehow two pi uh, times lambda two over lambda one. And now, okay, so this is monodromy. Now we do, do variation. So what is variation? So this is uh, the, the, 
the same thing, but we subtract this gamma which projected to this segment. So this is just uh, some, somehow uh, from here to here to here. Uh, so this is the variation. And now we do the, the, the monodromy of the variation. Monodromy, so uh, monodromy lambda 2 of variation lambda 1 of gamma. And so what do we do? So somehow now what happens is that uh, this guy here, the exponent lambda 2 is well adapted to turning around to this axis. So this one will make exactly a full turn. And so we will make a full turn here. And the picture which we get is something like this. Uh, so we have this, this, we have this, which it will then somehow be, uh, no, it is, uh, yeah, that. So then this one makes a full turn. It's not easy to, to, to make the picture. And now we subtract from this one in order to obtain the variation. We subtract from this one uh, this expression. And then what we get is precisely this uh, commutator cycle that uh, we have somehow something which is there, there, there is four times in the middle. And uh, you have twice you turn once in one direction, once in the other direction. Of course, the order is important, but I, I will kind of try to go not too slow. And so this is a, 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 exactly the, the Pochhammer cycle. Uh, so you have something, something like this. So this is the situation. This is what you get when you make. Uh, uh, so this is the variation lambda 2 of variation lambda 1 of gamma. OK, and now uh, this, uh, this works essentially for, I mean, this, uh, I didn't assume anything about lambda 1 and lambda 2. But if lambda 1 is equal to lambda 2, then already if we do one variation, so if lambda 1 is equal to lambda 2, so what will happen in that case? What will happen is that these two will be somehow synchronized. And somehow when we make a full turn here by lambda, at the same time we will make a full turn here. And then in that case we will have that variation lambda, so this is lambda, of a cycle gamma is uh, uh, figure eight cycle. So these are somehow uh, main ingredients. And so, for instance, if we have a cycle here, what can we obtain by continuous extension of this cycle? So what we can do, we can do variation. We can do double variation once in accordance to this end, once in accordance to this end. And so what we will get in this case, we will obtain uh, we will obtain a Pochhammer cycle here plus a Pochhammer cycle here. So this is something which kind of looks a little bit annoying because one would like to have Pochhammer cycles alone. But essentially, the reason is so uh, uh, why this is not annoying. Essentially, what you do, you start, you have your cycle somewhere, say, I don't know, here. And then you do this, say, uh, double variation and you get these two guys. And then from these two guys you have, yes, maybe I should say also about the intersection number because this is also important, is that the intersection number so uh, this cycle gamma and variation uh, lambda 1 or lambda 2 variation lambda 1 of gamma, it is, uh, I should be, uh, it's not important, but it is plus or minus one. So what is the reason? Why is it so? The reason is 
simply, I mean, one can see it geometrically, because when you, you have this cycle, and what you do with this cycle, you just, here you start shifting in positive direction, and here you shift like this. And so you have, and uh, uh, you will intersect this, this uh, cycle, will intersect this one, say in these two points, but I mean, it's not a true, it doesn't transverse. If you bring this point here, you will have a transverse intersection, just one transverse intersection. So this intersection number will be always plus or minus one. It is very similar as the classical picard lefschetz formula. Okay, so you get this one, then from this one you get this one. Uh, uh, ah, so, uh, so here I was uh, a little bit cheating. So here, as I have here the same sides, I don't get, I, I don't make the double variation, I just make a single variation. And my single variation will give me not a Pochhammer cycle, but a figure eight cycle. So here I get figure eight, figure eight, uh, and so on. And for instance, here I have two Pochhammer cycle, uh, and also what we can do, I mean, once we have a situation like this, we can also make a variation not with respect to the two vertical lines, but with respect to the two horizontal lines. If you make variation with respect to the two horizontal lines, then we will get the, uh, the, the, the sum of the two Pochhammer cycles which are here. And so what we get is that somehow we propagate this uh, cycle everywhere. I mean, uh, yes, so, so, so this slight problem that we have that we don't get uh, just one of these cycles but the sum of the cycle, how is it overcome? If you continue pushing it, so you push here, here, here. I didn't say that the choice of epsilon is made in such a way that all the critical points which appear here in the middle are on different levels. So one can make, in addition to doing uh, uh, this uh, uh, variation, one can do classical monodromy around the critical point and then somehow these ones will generate only the, the, uh, the vanishing cycle. And so we always do somehow, we go like this and we go Look, so if we started, for instance, here, we obtained these two, then we obtained this one, then we obtained these two, then we obtained these two, and here we obtained, the, uh, still we obtained two, two, but here we get, we finish up with a triangle. And when we finish up with a triangle, there is just one cycle. And so then somehow we, we, we can go back and, uh, and obtain the, the, the situation. So uh, what we get I don't find the proposition, but I, I, I will write it from the head. So proposition uh, the orbit by monodromy uh, 
When I say monodromy, I understand it in the somehow vast sense, all transport, all parallel transport, so including uh, variation, uh, uh, weighted variation, and so on, the orbit of, uh, by monodromy of the cycle delta in the special case, the special uh, curve case contains a chain of uh, Pochhammer cycle or figure eight cycles connecting uh, all points of intersection of the line L0 of the curve L0 with other curves Li uh, including L infinity. So essentially uh, the picture is the following. So we have this, uh, I, I didn't finish the, the well, maybe I finished the statement of the proposition. Moreover, all cycles in the leaf of F0 are also in the image. So we have, in some sense, three types of lines, uh, uh, three types of curves. So uh, as I told you, uh, essentially what happens is that when you make, a small, you make a small deformation of this. So in the small deformation, this becomes, a, maybe I make a zoom of this picture. So zoom of this part of the picture we had something like this. But then here we have a triangle and this triangle actually after adding epsilon this becomes something like this. This becomes an oval and moreover we have uh, this these cycles and these cycles we generate also. So how do we generate these cycles? Here it is essentially by classical monodromy. We don't do anything new. This is somehow once we obtained one of these cycles, uh, uh, we, we, we kind of, uh, the idea is that all of the cycles can be seen in the real. So the cycles are seen in the real either as true real cycles or as kind of settled cycles but which have some trace in the, in the real plane. Uh, so this is somehow essentially the, the main proposition and kind of a sketch of how one uh, proves it. I don't know if there are questions. Yes. Uh, you are right. Uh, uh, no, 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 no. Uh, so, so the story is that precisely the way how. Uh, so, so this is uh, the singular situation, which I start with, but then I deform the situation, and so I, I don't make the picture for the deformed situation. 
But in, the, in fact, my picture would be, so from this triangle, I should get something like, so these three values, they are separated. Uh, because, uh, so one would get something like, uh, I don't know, something like this, and uh, something like, uh, so this, something like this, and so, uh, uh, yes, I mean, these are not, not the same levels. They're, no, they're on different levels. And somehow, and to, on each level, we have a, we have a cycle. Yes? Uh, what, uh, I think it is for what we do. Yes, I should, I, I should mean to homotopy, homotopy class, I think. Uh, no, uh, actually, I, I, I can do it in homology because uh, I, I think your question is somehow for for the future. But uh, somehow now uh, our form, the form that we integrate, it is uh, just a univalued form. So I don't have, a, I don't need a homology. So I can. Yes, yes, yes. But I, I don't need. Sorry, I don't need homotopy. Homology is sufficient. No, 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 the Pohammer cycle. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. On the leaf, on the leaf. On the leaf, it is a true, uh, a true, uh, I, I can work in homology on the leaf. Downstairs. I mean, uh, yes. The, the, the story is that this picture which I make is not uh, the, uh, this is the picture I make here is not the, the picture of my uh, model. It, my model is a small perturbation of this singular picture. And I didn't draw the picture for the model. So the, uh, because uh, it is complicated, I, I, I draw a small part of the picture and uh, somehow I think you see that it is complicated. This is the reason why I don't want to. <laughs> I started with easy mathematics, one plus one equal to two, and so I thought that uh, I can advance. <laughs> okay. Uh, so this is somehow essentially the idea, and so once we have this uh, proposition, can I erase? So first thing is that this was a special, I don't know if you still have the blackboard. No, yes, so this was a special curve case. So once one has a special curve case, one wants to deal with a general curve case. So how does one deal with a general curve case? One has to do some parallel transport. So this is precisely uh, if you know uh, the, the uh, I mean, this is something which is not very, very common, but is used for abelian integrals, that you uh, do parallel transport not only, I mean, okay, maybe I, I, I will make uh, recall the situation in classically in, in, uh, for abelian integrals.
Right. So if you take, I, I don't know, f uh, uh, polynomial in uh, c of x, y, of some degree of f is equal, I don't know, d. Then you have that this f, what one usually studies is that one studies a vibration which goes from f, uh, uh, vibration f, which goes, it's not completely true, but I will write it nevertheless, from CP2 to C. So it is not a vibration. In order to make it a vibration, you have to take out the critical uh, values and you have to take out the indeterminacy points. But essentially, you have a kind of vibration which goes like this. And then you have a generic fiber, which is something which looks like this. In the generic fiber, you have some cycle. And you transport the cycle. Essentially, you transport the cycle. Uh, so you, what you do, you take here in the basis, you have some uh, critical value. There's, uh, there are some critical value, and you have some base point. And then you, uh, you take some path, which goes like this. And you want to uh, move this uh, thing to, to, to uh, I mean, you move it. You have a, f a local vibration. You have, uh, uh, you, you put it to near, you push it to nearby fibers. And then it comes back. And uh, eventually, it can come to not the same cycle, but maybe a cycle, a cycle like this. And how is this done? Essentially, this is that you push by the gradient. I say essentially because it's not completely true, because there are some problems uh, precisely due to this indeterminacy points, but I, I will maybe not uh, uh, speak about it. But now, what you can do, you say, okay, no, I'm not, I, I want to be able to change f. So each f is given by some, uh, uh, so, so if you have a polynomial f in CP2, so it is parameterized by its coefficients. So there is some a in the C to some power, I, I, what is it, uh, m squared? No. Uh, if you have a polynomial of degree n, uh, in two variables, it is, uh, no, it is uh, n minus one squared. And uh, then uh, you, can, uh, you can look at, at, at the mapping f tilde, which is equal to, uh, which goes from uh, CP2 to Cn minus one squared into Cn minus one squared. Uh, C times, which is given by, so you take, uh, if you take an element here, x, you, you take a point here, and the parameter a, so a point a uh, to, to point p a, what do you associate? You take the polynomial f a, so if you take parameter values a, you have a polynomial, uh, you have f a and you calculate it in p and you you preserve this uh, this value a as kind of a label to know where where you are and this gives you uh, vibration and you can move uh, cycles of course you have to avoid singular leaves but you can move cycles around in the product in this uh, in this big I call it big vibration and essentially the same thing you can do here in the curve case. So essentially the reason why, how do you do it? You push with the gradient of uh, logarithm of f. f is a multi-value function, but logarithm of f is a univalue function. And you have a well-defined vector field given by the gradient. You can even make its flow. So, so you push everything by the flow of this vector field. You can make it even uh, complete, as we did in the paper with Marcin, by somehow modifying slightly at, uh, at infinity. But essentially, so this is a way how you can transport one situation 
to an uh, analogous situation. You, uh, the idea is that you have one situation where you see what is going on and you transport it to a similar situation. Uh, it is, uh, I first learned from it uh, from the, the, the so it is uh, the work of Ilyashenko. I, I don't think it is the original work of Ilyashenko in, in, in his uh, first paper, but somehow uh, the paper, the, the result I, I mentioned. This result, one has, uh, the idea is precisely that you take some special configuration which is given by, by lines, and then you see, every, you see all the cycles here, and then you see all the intersection numbers, and you see that all the intersection numbers are, are good, and precisely these intersection numbers, uh, you make a sm it, is, it is a non-generic situation, so you cannot push, you cannot do this. You do a small deformation, a small deformation doesn't change intersection numbers, and then you take a, a point close to that point, and then you push to, 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 to the, the place where you have to, to make the study. Okay, and so somehow, in this way, one obtained, obtains the same uh, proposition without the word special. So here, maybe only uh, one has to, uh, no, I think it's, yeah, I put a chain, so chain, chain makes sense in general. So, so, so essentially, the picture is the following. Somehow, so you have, you have this uh, L0, which can have some genus. You, ha you can have some, something, something like this. You have some point here where you, uh, you have a point at infinity. So this is uh, L0 intersection with infinity. Here you construct, so it is a construction mentioned by Colin, where you obtain your uh, where you obtain uh, the, 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 the function g. And then you have to extend this function g. So it is, a, it is the question of solving a system of variation equations. Uh, so these are, you have, you take some base point here. You say, take a transversal here. So this is a point, I think we call it in the paper p sigma. This is sigma. And uh, you take, you have here all uh, the other separatrices which cut the, the, this, uh, this picture, this uh, separatrix. And we take, we, we wind around all of these separatrices. Uh, you will tell me, okay, but uh, you're cheating, so why, why do you put it here in front and not uh, behind? Uh, somehow here you have this, uh, this cycle, but actually these cycles, they don't, they have no, no, no incidence. So these cycles, uh, they have two properties. So we, we call them pure cycles because they are, pure, they are cycles which are not related to intersection of different separatrices. They are just related to one separatrix. So these pure cycles, they have, what property do they have? One thing is that the integral or along a pure cycle of this form eta tilde is equal to zero because it, is, it can be obtained in the image by continuous, uh, uh, by analytic continuation. And the other thing is that there is, so variation along a pure cycle is trivial, is equal to zero. Why is it so? This is not the case for these other cycles, because if you go here around, you will get some lift and uh, you will have some, uh, some behavior that you have to study. But if you go, if you make something like this, uh, here locally, you have a univalued function, you have a vibration. So nothing happens in the neighborhood of this, uh, of this, uh, of this lift. You, you, uh, of course, in a critical point, if you go around the critical point, this is a different thing. You have to avoid the critical points. Okay. Uh, and so, and then the story is exactly the same as the story which was uh, said by Colin. That is that you have, you, you, uh, you have this solution of this variational equation. Uh, you, 
uh, uh, modulo these pure cycles, this cycle is just a composition of all these cycles. And then using some algebra that we established on variation, one can show that uh, if you have a solution of one variational equation, this same function is a solution of another variational equation. And so this gives you a globally defined function in a neighborhood of uh, these uh, separatrix. And this globally defined function, then there is the question of extension. which is this uh, Stein extension. Theorem which shows you that you have, you are in CP2. You have this L0. We managed to d define our function G on this domain. We take a compact, which is the complement of this neighborhood. We take M, which is CP2 <laughs> minus L0. And so this is always, if you have CP2 minus an algebraic uh, curve, uh, you have a Stein uh, manifold. And the theorem tells you that uh, the meromorphic function G extends to a meromorphic function uh, G on K. And somehow the rest of the story is, uh, is the same. So this would be kind of a sketch. Yes, so this, is, this gives you this function G, which appears here. And then you obtain that... Uh, uh, if you make this, uh, if, if you, if you uh, throw this to the left-hand side, then you have something that is proportional to omega. K is a compact. K is a compact, which is uh, CP2. Uh, ah. No, no, this was right. Uh, so this is uh, CP2, my CP2 minus a neighborhood of L0 neighborhood of L0 where it was defined previously, the, the, the function G. Sorry? Okay, and so then uh, what you have here, you have, if you uh, move this to the left-hand side, then you have some expression which is proportional to omega, and this defines you this second function, and by some growth estimates, you obtain that it is of, of this form. So I think this would be essentially a sketch of, uh, of the proof. Questions? I can't, uh, I didn't finish. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> uh, Hussein said that it is 55 on that watch. I know that it is 55 uh, true time, but Hussein time, it is not yet 55. Oh. So, uh, I mean, the last thing, it was just some discussion about uh, some, uh, uh, yeah, some open problem. So, uh, one thing, uh, so uh, there is this uh, recent preprint of Hussein and, uh, and, uh, and uh, Lubomir, and which is somehow has essentially the same uh, claim, but there is one, there are two big differences. One big difference is that we have lambda i over lambda j are not, do not belong to Q, and we have that degree of Fi is arbitrary. So this is our result, and uh, Hussein and Lubomir, it is uh, lambda i over lambda j are rational, and the degree of Fi is one, so they are lines. And so uh, the, it would certainly be interesting to study 
and actually I had to, to, to write a project and I wrote a project uh, to, 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 to come here to, uh, to apply and the project is somehow to study what happens uh, somehow in, if, uh, uh, if one takes higher degree here. So this is somehow one question. Uh, second question is uh, uh, one can of course uh, study more generally more general Darbu systems. For instance, with exponential factors. So on. The third question is uh, certainly with, if one doesn't put any hypothesis, the theorem is, uh, is wrong. Uh, if, you are, if you take an intersection of uh, Darbu and, for instance, uh, symmetric uh, systems, uh, and then, of course, you can deform somehow in the direction of uh, symmetric systems, and then you will not have Darbu, but somehow I think uh, it would be interesting to study the, the phenomenon. Uh, the fourth question would be the question of higher dimension. I have the impression that uh, what we did here doesn't really use very much uh, dimension two. So I believe that somehow uh, things can be pushed uh, into higher dimension, but we didn't really somehow, uh, we didn't even do all the details in this case, so we didn't uh, uh, search further. And uh, the last question, so this is what was mentioned by Colin. Uh, we show somehow that uh, we generate by monodromy sufficiently many cycles to conclude for our argument. But the question is, uh, do, does monodromy generate all cycles? It is, uh, I mean, a topological question. It is not a, or a question in algebraic geometry. It is not, uh, we don't need it for, for what we are doing, but it's a very natural question. And, I mean, it would be nicer if we could say that uh, we generate all the cycles. And hence, uh, so what we certainly do generate is all the cycles which are somehow in the neighborhood of each one of this line and uh, then of this uh, curve, this apparatrix, and then of any apparatrix. But uh, is there something in the middle that we that escapes? Uh, I don't know. Now I have finished. <laughs> okay, question. Okay, thank you for, for the nice talk. Uh, concerning the higher dimensional case, uh, there was a thesis here by Diego Guzman, mm -hmm. and uh, he studied in general the topology of the leaves of logarithmic foliation. Okay. So under generic conditions in dimension two, what you get is a Loch Ness monster. Okay. But in higher dimension, in CP3 or so on, called dimension one holomorphic uh, mm -hmm. logarithmic foliation, the leaves are simply connected. Okay. So there's really a different problem. Okay. Okay. And okay. Uh, also the this, this, uh, the results or even the strategy here have a lot of uh, points of contact with uh, arguments by Fernando Kuckerman, uh, Javier, that is here, and Cesar, I think. He was here, he's no longer here. But because uh, the, the problem in, in higher dimension, you have natural equations for the space of foliation. Here okay. you can deform it as you want, there you have Frobenius integrability. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so they, from Frobenius integrability alone, starting mm -hmm. with a logarithmic foliation and doing just uh, uh, algebraic manipulations, residue computations, and so on they are able to prove the kind of uh, factorization okay. results that you have uh, okay. with this uh, topological, mm -hmm. topological mm -hmm. assumption. So that, that, there, are, there are relation, but it's, I think it's, a, it's an easier problem in mm -hmm. higher dimensions because you have Frobenius and here okay. you have uh, only Baltin or mm -hmm. Melnikov mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. whatever. But uh, I don't know. 
but uh, yeah, the, 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 uh, that's, uh, yeah, that's just a comment. Sorry, mm -hmm. I'm not sure. Th there is a question. My question was indeed about. Uh, you, it was your question, sorry. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> oh, I, I certainly would be interested. I mean, uh, uh, I will try to find. If I don't, I, I believe that I will find on the internet the, 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 the references. If not, I will ask I you to send me. I think it was published in, uh, in, in Fourier. Okay. And it draws a lot from Simpson's work on the okay. topo on uh, left sets for pi zero of mm -hmm. level mm -hmm. sets of logarithmic uh, long forms. Okay. He has also this wonderful paper by Carlos Simpson where he mm -hmm. he proves that when you pass to the to the covering mm -hmm. uh, to the abelian covering determined by the one form, mm -hmm. if your leaves are not algebraic or do not factor or something like that over lower dimensional varieties, the, the level sets are connected, even after passing to this uh, alien covering. Okay. So this is, this is the start of his thesis. Uh, okay. I understand that and... Uh, it's better. For, okay. for transmission. Okay, I, I did, I must say, I did not get uh, fully this argument why holonomy along this pure cycle, alo along any pure cycle, is trivial, and it seems crucial in your argument. Uh, okay. It is uh, trivial because you have a you, you have a vibration. Yeah. It is like if you you make a vibration and you don't wind around the singular points. I mean. Uh, No, 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 here. So uh, I avoid uh, uh, singular points. And so uh, I don't do anything, I mean, just. Uh, okay. Any more? It's related also to George's uh, comment. I mean, uh, the, uh, the classical uh, picard lifshitz theory becomes rigorous once you prove a Rechman's vibration theorem, which says that fibers are seen as infinite in Malford are the same. Uh, uh, in this case, I think uh, maybe, well, uh, you, you I, don't... I, I think uh, uh, these, uh, this is, uh, wh what I need is kind of Tom, le tom Lemma or something like this. I mean, you, you need some uh, depth. Uh, pro probably this is somehow the stratified uh, uh, no, do we need a really? I mean, you need a little bit certification, but it is kind of trivial certification. But uh, it, it is essentially a theorem, yes. Yeah, but uh, anyway, you have to remove some part of the. So you cut that this part. It's the idea. You cut this part and then you will get a, a, a vibration, I think. So the idea is that you, the, the, the pro problematic part of the singularities which produce this, uh, this, uh, the things that uh, Robert, uh, George's uh, student has worked, that you have to cut it out and then you really, it seems that you will have the part of the leaf which becomes isom, uh, some part of the lifts which are all uh, the same, same thing as the infinity manifold, and then you can rigorously talk about lifting up the cycles and all these things. But so, anyway. so, 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 so one thing that we do, in, uh, so it is in the, in the paper with the marching, which maybe has to do with what you are saying, is uh, somehow we deal a part with the indeterminacy points. So we don't, uh, I mean, the situation that, that you have, you have uh, CP2, you have somehow these uh, in indeterminacy points, and then you want to push. Uh, I mean, I would say essentially, uh, what is the idea of, of Erisman theorem? Uh, you need some compactness. Uh, so so you, you have, locally, you have a gradient vector field. You can push, and this is OK. But then you need some compactness. And then uh, compactness, you have, uh, 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 yeah, okay, CP2 is compact, but uh, uh, at least you have a problem at this point because, uh, uh, I mean, the function f is not well uh, defined. But you, okay. there you take a balls which are transferred to the foliation and you, this, uh, the interior yes, of the cell, yes, you yes, threw it away yes, because yes, there might be some complicated yes, things yes, happening yes, inside. Yes, and yes, then outside that yes, one, then yes, you can yes, start yes, uh, yes, continue yes, your argument of yes, lifting the cycles yes, and so on. Yes. So this is what we do 
in the paper with Marcin and uh, kind of uh, uh, it is sketched in in this uh, in this paper. But uh, it Anymore? certainly can be can be made more rigorous. You should have organized the conference later. <laughs> more question? So let's thanks again.